So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today to the summer programming guide that is being offered by the Office of Family uh, uh, for the, for, <laughs> my goodness, I'm sorry. Thank you for coming today for our summer programming guide that is being presented by the Office of Academic Support. Um, Muchas gracias por, um, I have to tell them about the globe before I get going, right? Yes. Okay. So um, I just would like to remind everyone that uh, this information is going to be recorded. Uh, it's being recorded as we speak right now. And we ask you to please uh, mute yourselves. Uh, there's going to be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation, or you can use the chat uh, to ask your questions. Entonces, and lo, para los que hablen español, por favor, va, vayan a la barra de abajo. Hay un globito y pinchen ahí para oír el intérprete. Eh, esto se va a grabar. También pónganlo. Eh, al final van a poder hacer preguntas en el chateo o preguntas verbales. Y es un pro, eh, es, muchas gracias por venir todo el mundo. Esto se ofrece por la oficina de, de estudios académicos. Y eh, es sobre el, el curso de verano de estudios. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and um, enable the, um, the interpretation room. So everyone that needs Spanish will select Spanish and the interpreter will be able to translate from there. Okay. Estoy poniendo el cuarto de interpretación y todo el mundo que le haga falta español puede seleccionar español. Okay, voy a empezar ahora. Está bien. Okay. All right. Thank you, Claudia. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Khalid Ismail. I am so excited to be with you this evening um, to share with you our offerings for the summer uh, that the district is very excited to welcome our families to uh, participate in. So I work in the Office of Academic Supports. I am joined today with a wonderful team um, who will be sharing with you more information about what we have available this summer um, what you might be able to take advantage of um, so that you can um, encourage your students to have a wonderful summer with us. And so with that said, I will start by sharing with you why summer matters. One, as we know, one of the best ways to engage students over the summer is through a combination of enrichment activities, learning activities, um, and providing young people with an opportunity to both relearn or catch up on what they might have missed in the academic year and also prepare for what they have coming up in the upcoming year. We know that students have had a tough time this year. We know that extended remote learning, that return to hybrid, um, that students have had a lot of adjustment this year. And so we want this summer to be an opportunity for students to reconnect with their peers, to learn some of those critical skills that they need uh, and be able to have fun, engage and come back in the fall ready um, for, for learning. Um, so my team and my colleagues today are going to share with you a, a number of opportunities based on the grade that your student is currently in and or the grade that your student will be in the fall. Um, they'll tell you about uh, what the content and curriculum that we will be providing to students. They'll tell you about the schedule and they will share with you how to register your students. I want to go over a couple key dates that are critical for you to make note of. Last Thursday on April 8th, registration for summer was opened. And so you might have already received a number of communications to encourage you to register your students uh, for the summer. That registration window will remain open until May 15th. We are encouraging families to register by April 30th, as we will be placing students on a first come first serve basis into each of our sites. 
Uh, as you know, families in their registration process will be able to select where they want their student to participate over the summer. And so in order for us to be able to place students, um, we want as many families to register as early as possible. Our summer program will begin on June 28th and will run through July 30th. Um, with the exception of extended school year for students with disabilities, that programming will run through August 6th. And so I will repeat some key dates to keep in mind. April 30th, priority registration. April 15th, deadline. June 28th, start of summer programming. At this time, I'm going to transition to members of our team to share with you our offerings. What they are going to describe is going to be based on this grade that your student is entering into. So if I am, if I Khalid, I am currently a first grader, that means I am entering into second grade. Uh, you will want to learn about our programming for students entering in grades one through eight. If you, are, if you have a student who is entering into high school, so for students who are entering into grades nine through 12, our team will share with you opportunities that are available for, that stu for those students. We will also talk about opportunities for students entering into kindergarten. In addition to opportunities and supports that we will be providing to English learners and newcomers to the district, as well as our students with disabilities. So with that said, I'm going to turn it to Dr. Asia Carpenter, who is going to share with you um, our wonderful elementary program offering for this year. Dr. Carpenter. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. I wanna share with you the opportunities for our students who are entering first grade through eighth grade. We have a summer program that will cover many of the instructional focus that will prepare students for the next grade. This will include programming that involves project-based learning, art, music, and physical ed. We will also have opportunities for students to participate in extracurricular programming still around music, art, physical education, and athletics. All of the programming for our students entering grades one through eight will embed social emotional learning as well as have opportunities to learn about electives that focus on career awareness and STEM for our seventh and eighth grade students. The dates for our programs for students entering grades one through eight will be June 28th through July 30th. The program will run from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. The day is broken down Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12.45 p.m where instruction will happen and the extracurricular activities will happen between 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. On Fridays, students will have a full day camp experience from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. We are partnering with the city of Philadelphia out of school time in order to provide the extracurricular activities from 1 p.m. in the afternoon to 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Monday through Thursday, and then Fridays from 8.30 to 4 p.m. In order to register, you may go to the website or we can support you with registration at the conclusion of this presentation. I will now pass it over to my colleague, Kathy White. Good evening. So I'm gonna talk about our 
bridge our summer bridge programming, which is for our students who will be entering grades nine and 10 in the fall. That means that those students are current eighth and ninth grade students. Our bridge program is a program designed to transition students to and through high school. And so in this program, students will be learning foundational English and language arts, as well as math skills. They'll be learning the skills that are necessary for them to transition to the next grade. In addition to those foundation skills, students will also learn career awareness and financial literacy. Students who are participating in this program will also receive transition support. That support will help them transition to high school. So that would be for our current eighth grade students and our current ninth grade students who have not had the opportunity to attend high school physically yet. They'll also be learning social emotional, they'll also have social emotional learning and we will also be covering fitness in this program as well. So it is encouraged um, for all incoming, all incoming ninth and 10th grade students are eligible for this program and it's encouraged that they participate, but it is specifically important for our students who are entering ninth grade this year, who may have ended the school year with an F in a core subject. Those students are strongly encouraged to attend this program in order to improve their math and ELA, their English language arts skills before they enter high school. This program will be offered, this program will be offered June 28th through July 30th. And the program hours will be 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And if you are interested in registering for this program for yourself or your, uh, for yourself, if you're a student um, or for your scholar, if you're a family member, um, you are able to do that through this website, or as Dr. Carpenter mentioned, we can help you with that at the conclusion of this presentation. And so with that, I would like to turn it over uh, to my colleague, Ariel Peterson. Actually, it is my turn, so. It Good is Dr. Carpenter's turn again. Oh, goodness. I'm happy to present to you also the opportunities for some of our ninth through 12th graders. These programs are designated specifically for students who need to improve their grades or recover credits. First, I want to talk to you about the quarter five grade improvement program. This program is designed to help students who are in danger of failing right now or who have failed a core course. A core course is a course that is English, math, social studies, or science. This program will allow students to improve their grade from an F to a D. Only students who have failed a full year course in the 2020, this current 2021 school year will be eligible to attend. Students who are eligible are going to the 10th grade through the 12th grade, as well as students who are currently in the 12th grade and have failed the course this year will be encouraged, strongly encouraged to attend quarter five to improve their grade. 
if a student does not participate in quarter five to improve their grade now, they will have to recover the course prior to graduation in order to remain on track. And when I say recover, I mean take the course again in order to ensure that they get the credit they need to graduate. The other program I wanna to speak to you about is credit recovery. Credit recovery will be offered to students who have failed a course before this current school year. Those courses are courses in English, math, social studies, science, an elective course, a phys ed course, or a health course. Students will be able to recover or retake up to two courses this summer, which would give them the credits they need to graduate. All students who participate in credit recovery may be students who are entering 10th through 12th grade. That means that some students will recover credits that will allow them to be on track for graduation and some students who attend may need these courses in order to graduate this year. It is very important that students who are eligible for this program attend this summer so that they are on track for graduation. The dates for this program are June 28th through July 30th. The program hours will be Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. All students who are going to quarter five rate improvement or credit recovery will be in person at high school sites around the city. Students will be registered to courses that they need. This could be a combination of credit recovery courses as well as quarter five courses, whatever students need to make sure that they are on track for graduation. For registration, this is a bit different from all of the programs we've seen so far. Registration for quarter five and credit recovery are based on students' eligibility, which means if students have failed or are in danger of failing. Therefore, they will be registered by their school's roster chair. A roster chair is a person who makes up a student schedule. They see what students need and are able to say, Asia needs this course. So we're gonna make sure Asia is placed into this course. They will register students according to what they need and we will be sending out a letter to let you know if your student might be eligible for either quarter five or credit recovery. If you have additional questions about that, we can answer those questions at the end of the presentation. You can type it in the chat. And if you have a specific question about your student, if you are around at the end, I can help you. I am now gonna pass it over to Ariel Peterson to talk to you about additional programming for ninth through 12th graders. Thank you, Dr. Carpenter. Um, and hello, everybody. My name is Ariel Peterson. I am in the Office of Post-Secondary Readiness. So Ariel, you're gonna go slow, work, so we can ensure translation for all of our families. Thank you. Um, so today we are going to discuss three different programs that are going to be for students in grades 10 through 12. Those programs include the University of Pennsylvania's Rising Senior Summer Academy, also known as PENRISA. And that program is a virtual four-week intense summer program. It's designed to immerse incoming 12th grade students in an academic, career, and post-secondary preparatory experience 
So this is all of those rising seniors. Instruction and mentorship will be offered to cohorts of students supported by a dedicated network of Penn graduate and professional student teaching assistants. Um, the subject matter, excuse me, subject matter experts from all 12 academic schools at Penn. Students can earn an elective credit towards their SDP graduation requirements. So all of the students that participate in the Penn Brissa program um, will receive a credit. The second additional program that we have is our Startup EDU program. And that is also a four week program where students will gain the skills that they need to start a business. Students will learn concepts such as presentation skills, targeting a market, financing, finances, excuse me, and budgeting. The students that successfully complete that program will receive an incentive at the conclusion of the program. And this program is gonna operate on a hybrid model. Three days are going to be digital and two days are going to be in person. The third program that we have is going to be a paid internship and work experience. This is through Work Ready PYM. Um, these summer experiences will include safe in person participation at least three days a week. So um, the dates and the schedule for each of these programs is going to be different. For our Penn RISA program, that's going to be June 28th through July 30th. And it's going to fall on Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our startup EDU program is going to run from July 6th through July 30th. And this is a hybrid model. So it's going to be digital Monday through Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it will be in person on Thursday on Thursday and Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For all of the work ready experiences, those will run from July 6th through August 28th. Those will be Monday through Friday. And there will all, those times vary depending upon the experience that the student is enrolled in. For those students who are going to be participating in one of those programs that Dr. Carpenter talked about earlier, there will be some afternoon slots available for students so that they can participate in both. Registration for these programs looks a little bit different. So Everybody at the end is going to receive the main school district link to our programs. If someone, if you have a child that is interested, or if you yourself are interested in any one of these three programs, you would just look for the name of the program and it will redirect you to that application. Thank you. And now we are going to pass it to Shelly and Craig. Hello, all. Uh, ooh, something popped up in my screen. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Thornton. I'm from the Office of Early Childhood. Uh, we are excited to offer a summer program for incoming kindergarten families this year. 
This fully virtual program is designed to help families get ready for kindergarten. Through the program dates, though the program dates are the same for the program as the older grades, the, regist the registration process is different. The enrollment form is not available on, on the website, but will be emailed to all families who are registered for the school district of Philadelphia's kindergarten this year, for next year. If you are registered, you will get an email with the form no later than the end of this week. If you are not registered for kindergarten, please go to philasd.org backslash thrive at five to get started. Once you are registered for kindergarten, you will get the email to enroll into the summer program. Families will participate in 90 minutes of digital instruction with a teacher two times per week, Monday and Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday, I mean, Monday and Tuesday, or Wednesday and Thursdays. Asynchronous activities will be offered throughout the program, some for the whole family, some for just the caregivers. We will have some great offerings from local community partners, all focused on getting families more comfortable with the transition to kindergarten. Also, families can opt to schedule an in-person visit to a sample classroom, to a sample kindergarten classroom once during the program. Look out for that email later this week and I'll add our email to the chat if you have any questions. Our email is ksummerprogram at phillasd.org. Okay, now I pass it on to, I'm sorry, I don't know who to pass it on. <laughs> Benalyn, it's okay. <laughs> Good evening, parents and families. My name is Benalyn Baluyot, and I am here to inform you of the summer program options for students who are English learners. So English learners who will be in grades one to eight or in grades nine to 12 in the coming school year have the option to choose between participating in English language development or in general education programming. So what's the difference? The first option, the English language development or newcomer English learner program is appropriate for English learners who are levels one and two and are enrolled in September, 2019 or later. The general education programming is appropriate for all other English learners who have been uh, in school for three or more years. And if you have any questions about what program or which program is most appropriate for um, your child or children, I will be here to support you at the end, or you may reach out to the ESL teachers, the ESL teachers in your children's school. And they'll be happy to support and guide you in uh, selecting the most appropriate program. So if you choose the English language development program, the dates for that will be June 28th to July 30th. So for elementary students, the hours are 8.30 to 4. And for high school students, the hours are 8.30 to 1.30 p.m. The registration form is the same for all programs. I just want to point out that there is a translated version in nine different languages that is included in the form. And we hope that it will help a lot of our families. Thank you. The next slide. Wonderful, thank you. 
So I will briefly go over now our services, our extended school year services for students with disabilities. Extended school year services are free special education services that are provided to students that require those supports beyond the 180 regular school day. That primary purpose of extended school year is to maintain the progress that the student has made during the, most, during the year on their most critical goals and objectives according to their IEP. The ESY program is based on the student's individual needs and the eligibility for the program is determined during the student's IEP meetings with their IEP team. The program dates for extended school year this year are June 28th through August 6th. An extended school year will be offered three days a week from nine to 1 p.m. In addition, Recovery services will be offered on Thursdays and Fridays for students with disabilities as well. I do want to note that students with disabilities participating in extended school year are eligible to participate in all after school programming as well as enrichment opportunities that are available to all their peers during the general education program during the school day. Families will receive information and be able to opt in to how they would like their student to participate this summer. If you have questions about your student's eligibility for extended school year, please reach out to their special education teacher or IEP team members so that they can support you. So I know that was a lot of information. And if you are thinking to yourself, Oh my goodness, where do I start? Which program is best for my student? I would say, think about it this way. If your student is entering into the elementary school years, so grades one through eight, you want them to go to the elementary program. Depending of whether your student is an English learner, you might want to choose specific targeted development for English language development. If your student is entering into kindergarten, you should register them for kindergarten and you will receive an application to support for the, for the kindergarten program. For high school, if your student is entering into ninth and 10th grade, you should support them in registering for the bridge program. If they're entering into grades 10 through 12, it is going to depend on what your student needs. Do they need to recover grades or credits? Or can they participate in a different opportunity this year? The application will guide you through these questions. So I encourage you to click on the application and answer the questions. It will help you make a decision. When you complete the application process, you will have the opportunity to select which site you want your child to participate. These are the list of elementary sites and secondary sites in front of you. I encourage you to find the one that is closest to your home or that is most convenient for you and your family this summer. We will do our best to place families within their first or second choice for this summer. All placement will be based on occupancy um, and capacity as dictated by um, our health and safety protocols for the, for the year. Speaking of health and safety, I would like to go over a few notes about how we will keep all our learners as well as our staff safe this summer. All of our programming that is occurring in person will follow the guidance that's outlined by the Philadelphia Department of Public Health as well as the CDC. We will follow all of our current health and safety protocols that are in place so if your child has returned to hybrid learning this spring, 
they hopefully are already used to wearing a mask to school, already used to seeing the adults around them wearing a mask and keeping a safe distance from their peers and from the adults. And we wanna encourage them to continue to do that during the summer. All students and staff will be required to wear masks this summer, as well as any additional protective equipment that is required depending on the role that is being carried out by that staff member. We will be conducting asymptomatic and symptomatic COVID-19 testing for all students and staff on a weekly basis. And when you complete the registration process, it will ask that you complete a consent form in order for your child to be tested on a weekly basis. Each site will have a nurse, a school safety officer, climate staff, as well as providers who will help us make sure that everybody is following the health and safety guidelines and keeping everyone safe. Now on to more exciting stuff. All of our learners this summer will receive a backpack with supplies, books, as well as materials that they will need to engage over the summer. That backpack will also be equipped with a sleeve so that they can put their Chromebook in it and bring it for the summer. We are encouraging students to bring their Chromebooks with them to school. Students will also have personalized kits on site for art and any other hands-on activities that they will engage in during the school day so that they do not have to share materials with their peers. Once registration and placement is completed, we will share transportation information with families. So please keep an eye out for that information, um, probably around the week of May 17th. Um, so we will share with you um, transportation information for the summer. Students entering into high school will receive SEPTA passes if they're also eligible for transportation. Finally, all students will receive breakfast and lunch during their programming. So we just went through a lot of information. And if you are digesting, wondering where you should start, our website is a great place to go, www.philasd.org backslash summer 2021. All of the information that we went over is on our website, including how to register, the schedules, and any other questions that you may have are answered there. There is also a contact form on our website that allows you to submit questions if you can't find an answer and we would be happy to help you. At this time, I'm going to end my share screen and answer any questions that folks have. Um, so if you have questions, you can either put them in the chat or um, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. I am going to bring the people back from the um, Spanish uh, room so that they are able to answer their questions, uh, ask their questions, and the interpreter provide them their answer too. Thanks. Entonces, la gente va a regresar del cuarto de español para que el intérprete pueda, pueda hacer sus preguntas y contestarlas. So there's a couple of questions about transportation in the chat. Hay un par de preguntas sobre transporte en el chat. Once we, your student is placed, uh, we will share with you transportation information. Transportation hubs will take students to all the sites. So if so we... una vez que esté en su lugar, eh, el niño y esté, eh, vamos a proveer información sobre el transporte va a haber centros de transporte que van a llevar a todos los niños a sus escuelas y lugares respectivos. Great. 
There's a question about charter school registration in the chat. Una pregunta sobre el charter school, eh, matriculación o registro de charter school. The registration process for charter and parochial schools will Para be... Para las escuelas parochiales y charter es lo siguiente. In about three weeks or so. Um, so unas keep an eye semanas. out for that registration process. Eso va a salir en unas tres semanas, o sea que esté eh, vivos para, para ver cuándo salga. Para matricularse. Other questions? ¿Hay más preguntas? ¿Cualquier cosa? I know there were a few people who actually wanted help with the registration process. So I'm actually going to open a breakout room um, for anybody who would like that. So if you need, if you would like to register your student right now, just put your name in the chat and what grade your student is in, and we can help you right here today. Entonces voy a abrir un cuarto especial para matricular, para registrar a gente que quería ayuda con eso. Si le interesa eso, ponga el nombre de su estudiante y el grado donde está. O donde va a ir y, y les voy a ayudar en el chat ponlo ahora escríbelo There's a question about changing the choice of schools. Uh, I would say Pregunta. you are going to change. I would just submit a new application and we will. Yo le di, hay una pregunta sobre cambiar de escuelas. Yo le recomiendo que hagan una aplicación, una solicitud nueva. Si quieren cambiar. Any other questions I can answer for? ¿Hay alguna pregunta más que podía contestar? Ariel, there's a question about the UPenn application process. Do you mind putting the link in the chat? For... Eh, Ariel, hay una pregunta sobre el UPenn uh, proceso de aplicar ahí. Puede poner el enlace dentro del chat. Excuse me. Yes. Hi. Um. So, for the 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 ESY, now that has to go through your um, students' IEP before you can register. Your students' IEP. Entonces, para para la escuela especial, el IES ESY eso tiene que ir por vía del IEP. De, de la escuela. So your students IEP team will determine if your student is eligible for ESY and then they will reach out to you to register um, and confirm your students participation for the summer. Entonces, so el, 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 equi yet... oh. eh, el equipo del, del IEP de, de, de su estudiante va a decidir si califican y entonces ellos eh, se van a comunicar con usted. And if they haven't reached out to you yet, they should be reaching out to you within the next two weeks or so. Y si no, si no le han contactado todavía sobre eso, deben hacerlo en, en las próximas dos semanas, más o menos. So those programs will be just hybrid, right? Or is it in person? Uh, ESY is offered both in person and digitally. So you will be able to decide what is best for your family. Yeah. Ese griega se va a ofrecer en persona y también digital, de, de modo digital. Ustedes pueden decidir lo que es mejor para la familia de ustedes, de cada uno. Other questions? 
Eh, ¿Hay más preguntas? Excuse me, are those locations that you placed on the, the slide earlier are the only locations that are offering the programs? Esos lugares que puso en la pantalla antes son los únicos que ofrecen el programa. So the, the sites that were listed are the sites that we are starting with and that we're encouraging families to attend. Los que pusimos en la lista son, estamos empezando con esos lugares y somos los que estamos alentando a las familias que vayan a esos lugares en un principio ahora. If and when any of those sites become full based on capacity, we do have additional ones that we can open. Um, so si se llenan, that. basado en la capacidad, si esos, todos esos se llenan, tenemos otras que podemos abrir. So yes, those 24 sites are what we're starting with. Entonces esos 24 ones. locales, es lo que estamos mm -hmm. empezando con ellos, sí. Por ahora eso es lo que hay. Does that answer your question, Amy? Con eso entiende? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sí, gracias. Arrest, if you haven't joined your breakout room, I do have Asia in there waiting and she can actually answer your question about um, and, credit recovery as well as registration for the elementary program. So join your breakout room so she can help you. Entonces, por favor, vayan a los cuartos de breakout, de separación, porque Asia está ahí esperándoles. Si tienen preguntas sobre recuperar los créditos, ese programa, o, de, o matricularse, registrarse para la... Eh, Los niños de primaria. There's a question on the chat that asks if these pro programs are for children up to 18 years old. Y la hay otra pregunta en el chat que pregunta si es los programas eh, son aplicables para los niños hasta los 18 años. For the high school programs, if your student is uh, currently in high school um, and turning 18, yes, they can definitely participate. Eh, para los programas del high school o la secundaria, si su hijo va a cumplir 18 y están en el high school o secundaria, por supuesto pueden participar. Um, Milagro, since we still have about nine minutes left, if you, uh, if if the student is with you, I can help with the with the interpreter. Uh, probably support you with the registration if that's something you want to do. Eh, Milagros, eh, quedan como nueve minutos. Si quiere apoyo con la aplicación, la solicitud, con el intérprete, se lo le puedo ayudar ahora mismo. Estoy bien, gracias. I'm good, thank you. Es para ayudar a otros a otros jóvenes que están en mi área y quería quería este asesorarme para orientarlos a ellos. It's really uh, to help another young person who's in my area and to give them ad advice on it and how, how to help them out more than me. Specifically. Wonderful. Muy bien. Si quiere, díganos. Any other questions that I can answer for folks? Eh, Hay alguna otra pregunta que tenga cualquiera que pueda contestar. If not, I do want to say we are very excited to welcome all of our families. Si no, estamos muy contentos y, eh, en dar la bienvenida a todas nuestras familias. We hope that this summer will be a fun, 
safe and engaging experience for all of our learners. Y esperamos que sea un, un verano divertido, eh, con mucha inter, comunicación interactiva y segura para todos los participantes. And I'm happy to hang back and answer any one-on-one -on -one questions if folks have them. Y también puedo esperar un poquito si hay alguna pregunta individual. Eh, no hay ningún problema. Estoy contento de contestarlo. Otherwise, have a great evening and thank you for joining us. Eh, pero si no, que pasen muy buenas tardes, noches y muchas gracias por haber participado y compartido con nosotros. I'm going to stop recording now. Voy a parar de grabar.